The ancient Sumerians counted by 60s rather than by 10s like most of the world does today. Not only that, but they had totally different counting systems depending on the type of thing that was being counted. Here is one important series of numerals that was used to count many types of discrete objects. And here's the system they used to count calendar time. They had at least 13 different counting systems in total. And because there were so many different counting systems and some of the signs occurred in more than one counting system, the value of the signs really depended on its context. For example, this small dot changed its meaning depending on what was being counted. Basically, the Sumerians hadn't yet figured out the idea of numbers as abstract entities. They hadn't learned to divorce the numbers themselves from the specific things that were being counted. This might seem like a deficiency to us today, but it actually made a lot of sense at the time. Since the primary function of these numeral systems was to tally objects, it made a lot of sense to be able to tell what you were tallying just by looking at the number. In fact, using different numerals to count based on the type of object isn't too different from how English works. We have to use measure words whenever we're talking about amounts of non-countable things. So you say a glass of milk, a bushel of wheat, a pint of ale. While English only requires measure words for non-countable nouns, other languages like Mandarin require them when counting any type of noun. So the Sumerian system of using different types of numbers for different types of objects really isn't that exotic. My name is Danny Heber, PhD in linguistics, and if you want to learn more about how language works, give me a follow.